I am Nick Dorian. And I'm Carolyn Baha, just taking a swig of my Nescafe original. And contrary to popular belief, this is Geeks in Malaysia hosted by Amelia Chen and not Amelia <laughs> Chen, Carl Wiley, and Jeff Sandu. As Nick's been playing with ChatGPT. Ini bukan, tapi ChatGPT bukannya nak tulis benda-benda macam ni. No, but I love how they came up with the names, but yours was the one that consistently they got correct. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Like, also that, you know, and like, I mean, like, great that we got hyped in an article. Oh, yeah. about, and I was like, uh, Amelia, and I'm like, no, 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 bukan aku, aku, bukan aku yang membawakan podcast ni. Aku, aku, aku just bagi idea je. The, you the, orang dua yang jalankan, bukan aku. The article in question is the beat uh, KL. Yay, thanks for shout Thank out. you, thank you who, for a shout out. Who did uh, what the now? Beat KL. The but, beat. Yes, uh, they're in Indonesia, Hong Kong, and one of the Singapore, and yeah. now they're here. And but, one of the Singapores? Yes, one of yeah, the Singapores. Singapore's. No, one. but I think also it's because, uh, I mean, the article, they were really trying to highlight female, yes. female-led podcasts. Mm, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. So, maybe that's why. Yeah. So, hi, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks yeah. for the shout-out. And also, Shopee, apparently, they have a blog that featured us. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Thanks, that Shopee. Was, that was curious. That was interesting. <laughs> I was like... Shopee I mean, has a blog? <laughs> and then, what do you call it? Like, um, this job that I'm on, which I can't talk about. Yeah. Uh, the details about. Yeah. But um, one of the guys there um, used to be a student of mine in Sunway. Oh, wow. And yeah, he listens to part as well. I'm like, okay. Okay, this is hi. interesting. Hello. Yeah. Thanks. Whoever's listening hey. and whoever's bigging us up, thank you so much. We appreciate it very much. Uh, <laughs> but having said that... Uh, having said that... Having said that, having said that, having said that, uh, we do have to share a little bit of sad announcement news hmm. what happened? because Amina's not going to be around for the next oh. three months. I thought you were going to say someone died. No, 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 no. I mean, there have been people who died, but I mean, <laughs> I mean yeah, it's sad the way you said it. It was just like <laughs> some sad news. Uh, you know, Today we James Gunn job. had explosive diarrhea and died. Oh shit, no. <laughs> Don't jinx this. Jinx, 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 jinx. But yes, uh, we're going to be taking a short three-month hiatus from the podcast at least uh, because Amelia is going to be off in Korea. Yes. I mean, yes. we will still be shooting Mm-mm. and recording some stuff, mm-hmm. but it won't... I mean, not to say that we've been regular up until now. <laughs> but I mean, we have been relatively consistent with every two weeks. Might not have been on a Thursday, but we're still consistent. Ish. 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 But, but yeah, yeah, we will. Those, be having... those who remember our less consistent days, get ready for a flashback, people. Yeah, yeah. You you know that review, that one review that says you know start listening to them before they go on a four year hiatus. I don't know who you are, but, but you know you. us very well. Yes, we s- still that person who wrote that. If you're still listening, make yourself known because I still want to know who this was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like back then, we're a little bit better than back then. We went almost seven, eight months. Yeah. Sometimes we did two podcasts in a year. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. And uh, I'd like to say that it was all because we were busy. Sometimes we were busy. Sometimes, Sometimes we're like, we oh, fuck. Uh, I think Who that, even listens to us? Fuck it. And I think there were a few times where we gathered. Last week we caught upon and then we just got so caught up watching shit on YouTube or mm. talking that we never did it. But now we're better. <laughs> yes. Apparently. Yes. Apparently. 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 Do you think we're better? Let us know. Yeah, hit uh, us back. But yes, uh, we will be having a bunch of videos that are coming out. So make sure you yeah. go and subscribe to our YouTube channel yep. uh, because that's probably going to be the predominant channel for the next few months. And yeah. Amelia, why don't you explain, if you can explain, what's going to be happening? Like, why are you going to Korea? Because I'm not Korean. That's it. I want to learn Korean. I want to learn how to pipe Korean flowers. Have you seen Korean buttercream flowers? That shit is cray. That shit is really, really cray. I'm like, is it flower or is it buttercream? You go and look. It's crazy. That and like, yeah. And like, Korean maybe f- to make Korean flow, like florist tree. Maybe. I don't What's know. What's the name of this flower again? What? What's Wait, the name you can't of tell flower? whether it's flower or cream? Yeah. What's it called? I mean, no, no, no. It's basically just, okay. I'm just going to show you. You follow, you just go to this chant, this, this, you, this, this. Buttercream? This, this cake decorator called Sue Cake. S O O cake underscore U L L Y. Okay, and you just look at the, like, is it cake, 
<laughs> you can't see. But like, is okay, it you made it sound oh, like when okay. you pick the plant, yeah, you can't tell whether it's a flower or whether it's cream dripping from the plant. Yeah, oh, no. because you're like, <laughs> I want to go pick the flowers. I can't tell if it's a flower or buttercream, and I'm like. It's okay, like wait. that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that I like, get. That I get. Yeah, but what's it look like on the tree? Yeah. Oh, I mean, what do you mean? No, I mean. No, we thought it's an oh, actual, actual flower. Yeah, uh, yeah like, you like, can't tell if it's a flower or a tree. Like you go to the cake. tree, it's like, is this cake or is it a tree? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell. That's cake decorating. Oh, okay. Cake that- decorating. So pipe. yes, Amelia's going to Korea to put cakes on trees. Yes. yes. And, <laughs> and maybe she'll make a cake like a tree. Yes. Or a tree like a cake. Ha! Ah. Yes. Ah. The possibilities are endless. Yes. Yes. And learning Korean mm. in the process. Mm. And 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 yeah, and supplying 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 your local Malaysian restaurant with um, much needed supplies. Oh, I wonder which one. I oh. wonder which one. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. But yes. yes. So, is there anything else apart from learning Korean you're planning to do over in Korea? No. No, just that. Yes. Okay. So yeah, if you happen to see Korea on the street, uh, Korea on the street. So <laughs> if you happen to see Korea on the street, doesn't matter if it's north or south. Say hi. <laughs> Tell them, you know, hey, how you doing? It's amazing. This entire fucking continent just walked down the Downing Street yeah. for no fucking reason. Because that's how far we've come in this world. Yes. Then an entire continent can walk down the street with yes. arms and legs and go, hey, I'm Korea. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I, don't know this, I don't know where this is going. I, I don't what know is where going, this is what going. Is, what is going on? I don't know. But anyway, so this is going to be the last last pod we have for a bit with Amelia. So we're just going for to three like, months. Yeah, for three months. Only yeah, three months. For three months. Yeah. No like, I'll be back in May. I'll be back in the end of May. I'll be back in June. Yeah. Okay. No worries. It's all good. It's all good. But we can't yeah. guarantee if I will still be here. Fingers crossed. Yes. Well, what planet are you going to? I mean, I can't say much just yet. I don't want to jinx it, but there might be a possibility I'm heading back down south. Yay! Yeah. Oh, because, oh, down south. Yeah. Hey. But I won't go missing oh. for four years. Don't worry. I'm not going to go missing for four years. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not this time. <laughs> no, this time if it happens, I'm going fucking finding you with a harpoon. Good luck getting that across the border. I have ways. I'm sure. But you don't think you can find a harpoon in South in in the South Islands? I don't know. The South Islands are pretty strict, bro, 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 bro. No, 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 no. It's no, it's fine. Yeah, they're strict, but they're from the South. We're Malaysians from KL. We know how to salute, salute shit. <laughs> nah, sure. I, I, I got, pe- I, I got my peeps in the South Island. They, they got me covered. Yeah, I'm sure there's one person that will protect me. I'd be more concerned trying to bring vapes in than fucking bringing a harpoon. Yeah, oh, yeah. Every every single Singaporean that smokes vapes here will always ask me, "Hey, bro, where to buy? I need to smuggle some back. Where to get the pods? Uh? Every single time. First question. Shh, don't I'm, out people. I'm I'm not saying who. I'm just saying we know certain, who. No certain Singaporeans. I don't know who. And you don't help. And you don't help them. No. no. <laughs> No, I don't because I genuinely don't know because I don't smoke vapes. <laughs> what do you mean they can't find a vape? Like, there's fucking pod stores everywhere. They probably want a certain brand. Yeah. Just look for the most foyo looking storefront. Yeah, uh, that's true. That has a barbershop in it. And, yeah. mo- you know, More than likely. odds are there's vape. And it's either in the name, it's either going to have the word vape or pod. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it dangerous for podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so it's going to be a random chat as usual, yes. just to catch out and shit. Yeah. See you final goodbye. Don't say like you're yeah. going to be gone. <laughs> you're not going to come back. Yeah. Hey, someone started it. Sad news, sad announcement. I just said yes. sad news. Yeah. I never said you it was going to be it. permanent. You said it like someone died. I mean, lots of people died. Yes. Yeah. As the Queen would say, many people died. I watched King Charles's current, like first like Christmas oh, I speech. Did. I did also. Wait, yeah, wait. I did as well. Wait, wait, what? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Last oh, Christmas, because yeah. it's not the Queen anymore. Yeah, oh, my God. and I watched it. I was like, did doesn't he go have this, people die? It doesn't have the same flavor. Oh. He doesn't have that. I don't know that presence that the Queen. Had. I don't know. Maybe it's just something about watching the Queen that we've watched for like all our life. Look, <laughs> it's 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 like following Letterman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Letterman did it for so long. It's like. Hello, welcome to the tonight. Oh shit, shit. this is tough. Uh, oh, speaking of which, somebody really did kill the Late Late Show. What do you mean? Late Late Show has been cancelled. <gasps> Why? Indefinitely. Because of James Corden. 
Because that fucker, oh. that fucker has tanked ratings, oh. and I don't think they can find another host. Bring back Craig Ferguson. Yeah, no, that's does he want to come? That's back? the nah. trend that's going around now. That the it's late like, late I'm show it. died with Craig Ferguson. No, that's the thing. Like, I fucking love the Craig Ferguson oh, era yeah. because he was unabashedly. We have no budget, so fuck it. Yeah, I'm just gonna do my thing. Yeah. Then when James Corden took it over, he made it. He made the set bigger, fancier. It was a much more different vibe. It was and much had, more friendlier. And he had all these segments. Yeah, yeah and it was much more fun. Rap battles. The whole, s- but watching Craig just talk to someone it was always fun because he wasn't interviewing them like any other late show. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the big deal about ripping up the cars and just chucking them away and then asking them shit. Yeah. The awkward silences. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Like the game, the awkward silence yes. game. Oh. Which is very fun. Because undoubtedly, the Late Late Show was essentially the Late Show after that. It was a no holds barred. You could do whatever the fuck you want because that was a slot where they thought nobody would watch. Because yeah. it's almost like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So he would I, always joke about how like his entire audience was made up of homeless people from the street. Yeah. So what James Corden did was take that and just transform it into an any other Late Show formula, mm. which... Does not mm. work because if I wanted to watch a late show, I'd go and watch Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel. No, that's the thing. Like, he was doing basically what Jimmy Fallon was doing, but with different types of segments. Yeah. So it became a battle of segments. And, and, and it, was, it was very gimmicky. Yes. Like, it was very, very And gimmicky. let's be honest, how many times did you watch the interview mm. for a James Corden show? Mm. Or Fallon, Wait, for that matter. Wait, actually, he does interview. Us. Exactly, because <laughs> you know, like he's he's made it yeah. the gimmick. He's made the gimmicks his brand. Yeah. Right? No, no, no. The only interviews I ever watch at Jay's Corner is when Dave Grohl is on. Because I'm <laughs> like, even with Fallon, like I don't like his interview style. I find him annoying. Mm. But at least there is one interview that I genuinely love because it's genuine. Which is when he had uh, when Fallon had Nicole Kidman on. Okay. And he wasn't prepared. Oh yes, I remember. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nicole Kidman. Uh, tells him that she used to have a crush on him mm. and was, you know, going over to his place because, you know, she was hoping to go out on a date or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Jimmy was so blur, yeah. which I totally relate to because at that time, he's just Jimmy Fallon from SNL. Yeah. Your agent says, Nicole Kidman's coming. I'm like, okay. You're not going to think, oh, Nicole Kidman wants to be with me. Yeah. <laughs> he used to, she used to be with Tom Cruise. Exactly. Like, that interview is great because you can see Jimmy Fallon is like, Wait, what the fuck? Yes. Like, what? My life could have been so different. <laughs> I possibly didn't need this show. But I mean, they were both married by then, so they were yeah. happy. But, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, you yeah. suddenly think like, even if you didn't think about marrying, like, I, I could have gone on a date with Nicole Kidman. But instead, I served Ritz crackers on a plate <laughs> whilst playing Nintendo. But you see, that's what makes... These interviews work. I mean, I also mm. don't watch The Tonight Show or like Fallon, Kimmel, I don't really watch. But mm. things like Graham Norton or like Craig Ferguson, it's because... Or The Daily Show, Trevor Noah. Trevor or Trevor, Trevor, Noah. Trevor Trevor's really good interviews. But then the, no, but the Daily Show as well has a very different format. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, very yeah, yeah. political show. So, yeah. yeah. Whereas with Craig Ferguson as well as Graham Norton, you feel you are there as a chat. It's just a yeah. friendly chat. And that's what makes it fun because this is a side of celebrities we don't usually yeah. see. It's not scripted. It's not, oh, so what did this film, during the shooting of this film, what was yeah, that? Pro- yeah. No, it's like, hey, you look like many old ladies from the past. Let's take a look <laughs> at them. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, or like, but I have no idea who's the researcher on Graham's show. I l- that, I w- oh, no. He his needs, research team he is d- like, He just digs, he digs shit. Up. Although like you know what penguins. I find funny on like a uh, Craig Ferguson's uh, show. Mm. <laughs> so if you look up Craig Ferguson on YouTube, right? I mean, number one, you'll find a whole bunch of his interviews are there. So we can still live the Craig Ferguson dream. Yes. But what I find fascinating, and it's always American uh, YouTubers that put this up, they put up Craig Ferguson videos as guides on uh, as guides for pickup artists. Like yes. look at his like. Yes. Uh, hmm. His, yeah. fl- his flirtation moves and look at how much all these girls yeah. react to it. Yeah. And when I look at it, it's as not. someone who grew up <laughs> in England, I'm like, uh, no, he's not like, he's he's just being nice. cheeky and yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. And if you notice, he's not being creepy. No. no. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, he's not doing it to pick right? women up. He is not fucking every single one of these girls he's, after the show. He's, yeah. he's not doing it to flirt no, no. with them. He's just being... Because you see when the girls react to it, they also know like it's fun and it doesn't you can tell for them it doesn't feel 
dodgy or yeah. dangerous. It doesn't yeah. feel like Trump sitting in front yeah. of him. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. With Craig, it's just kind of like, this is a cheeky boy. Yeah. And then some of them even like, oh, you think you're cheeky? Yeah. All right, I'm going to say this. And he's like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Back pedal, back pedal. I right? think those pickup artists should go and watch his documentary series, Hobo Fabulous, and realize that this is the quintessential Scotsman. Yeah. No, these he's pickup just artists being... should just go meet just have a genuine conversation exactly <laughs> like why do they think that what he's saying is a game it's like he's not, not gaming a game. this it's dude. just he's just a good like his interviews with uh, Mila Kunis and Marina Baccarin mm. they're lots of fun yeah the ones that you could tell he can't have are people like uh, what's her fucking name Aubrey Plaza I mean that's a tough one <laughs> Oh, but I love it. I mean, Aubrey, Aubrey would take the show but I love over. it whenever he gets another Scotsman on. Like Ewan McGregor. Oh, whenever he's with Ewan McGregor, <laughs> when he's with, uh, what's his fucking name? Um, Plain? Butler. Butler. Okay, Jared Butler. whenever Jared Butler's on, <laughs> oh. it feels like, okay, so Edward Norton, whenever he comes on, he's still Edward Norton Hollywood, yeah. right? So he still looks good. Whenever Jared Butler comes on, he's it like, feels like, oh, I'm going back home, fuck it, I'm on a t-shirt and fucking jeans. And no, but to be fair, that's like, Jared Butler. I can Butler smell Jared interviews. Butler on the screen. I'm like, dude, fucking, could you put a jacket on? No, you look at his you're, interviews, you're, it's you're, all you're, t-shirt and jeans. You're not in your, la- your, your, your mate's like flat man. You're, you're a Irish TV Scotland. show. He's Scottish. He's, he's been very criticized for his Irish accent. <laughs> Butler, he oh, was in a movie where he had to play Irish and Irish people were like, what the fuck are you doing? No, I love there was that photo of oh, him but, just huh? um, when he was when he had Capaldi on. Oh you yes, because yeah. they're both like close friends from childhood. They had a yeah, punk band, band together. together. Yeah, but Capaldi just didn't get his like. You could tell Capaldi's like, "The fuck are you doing? This is a talk show. I'm promoting <laughs> Doctor Who." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. We we know you're the Doctor, but <laughs> remember that time when we got drunk?" <laughs> you know, Capaldi's like, "I don't want to talk <laughs> about this." Capaldi's like, "No, no, 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 like, no, 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 no. This is not the brief." If you wanted this, we would have been a Graham Norton show, bro. Capaldi's like, it's the BBC. Don't fuck with it right now. <laughs> I'm getting paid. <laughs> this isn't the thick of it. <laughs> but like, it's true. If you wanted, just like us, if you wanted something yeah. more informatic, you go to the Daily uh, the, the Science Show or The Late Show, Letterman or Kimmel and all that. Oh, yeah, the Late Late Show. It's weird. It's like they thought, oh, we'll put another European in and I'll be fine. It's like, no, no, it does not work. No. Because Corden wants to wants the Tonight Show slot. This is his audition for the Tonight Show slot. Well, if he wants the Leno slot, then fucking... Because, uh, yeah, you're right, actually. He's, he's a bit more Leno. Yeah. I never liked Leno. <laughs> I did prefer Letterman to Leno. And <sighs> Conan. But oh, Conan, Conan got treated like a piece of shit. Yeah, but Conan did his own thing. And, you know, yeah. did his own thing. You see, that's also why Conan works. Yeah. But, like, Conan was... Uh, you know, it was the proper late show, but he wasn't a generic host. Yeah. He was still Conan O'Brien. Yeah. You know? But Corden yeah. Corden is try hard and he's ruined yet another thing. <laughs> Just like everything in his uh in his path. What else is and he it's gonna like, destroy? <laughs> yeah, you wanna go back to England, you know what they're gonna be like. They the Eng- no, the they English don't want him don't back. Want exactly. You. They're like you can keep him. It's fine. The English have come out to say, no, 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 uh, you can keep... Even in Parliament, his name has popped up. What? Yeah. I think there was one MP that compared him to, like, some bill that was absolutely oh. atrocious. And he was wow. like, you can keep him just like James Corden or some shit like that. Yeah, British British audiences are tough. Yeah. I would not be surprised, like, if it happened, if there was video footage of it, I'd be like, holy shit, but at that same time, be like... Nah, what, at immigration? Right. They'd no, be like, not let him in. No, if he's at immigration and you just see a bunch of people at the side, at the side going, Who ate all the pies? Who ate all the pies? You fat bastard, you fat <laughs> bastard, you ate all the pies! I, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. <laughs> Let's face it. They're cunts. Yeah, 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 yeah they're cunts. The Gwen and, and Stacey proud of it. <laughs> comeback, that Christmas special they did, tanked miserably because everyone hated James Gordon. Ooh. What? And yeah. they used to love Gwen and Stacy. But oh, they did used to love Gwen no. and Stacy. But... It's unfortunate because of course the Gwen and Stacy special they did was intrinsically the James Corden show once again. Oh. Ah. It was not Gwen and Stacy. It was James Corden featuring Gwen and Stacy. If he came back on Doctor Who, would you watch it? No. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Wow. Okay. Oh. If he was the doctor Oh, I, no, no. No, I am so sorry. No, no, no. His same if, character. The character this, that he was with Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Mate. Okay, yeah, sure. He was in Doctor Who just he before he went mate. to the States. Yes. No. You see, this is tricky. <laughs> this is tricky because that character was James Corden pre-James Corden. He was still nice. <laughs> he was still a lovable character. 
if he comes back now, that episode's going to be a piece <laughs> of shit. And also, wow. I don't think RTD will work with Corny. RTD does not have the patience to put up with Corn's bullshit. If Corn comes on... Oh, Russell T. Davis. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Were you thinking RDJ? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck's Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> no, no, no. RTD. The other acronym. <laughs> What's wrong with saying the full name? Russell, Russell T. T. Davis? Davis. Yeah. If Davis was involved... <laughs> there you go. Yeah. He would not Warwick? want to Corn... If Russell T. Davis is involved, he would not let James Corden on because I'm sure Corden is so big-headed he would have a list of demands. Really? I would not be surprised. Not a lot of people want to work with James Corden. Oh, dear. And I think there's a good reason why. It's only going to take a matter of time. He's already come out. The whole scandal of him in restaurants has come out, which has gone on for years. Oh, yeah, that that restaurant. Yeah. You didn't hear about the restaurant stuff? Nope. No, he got 86 from a very big restaurant in New York. Yeah. Because this is his pattern. He goes to restaurants thinking, oh, I am James Corden. Mm. I deserve the best service in the world. And he's done this in multiple restaurants. But one restaurant fought back and that was the beginning of all other restaurants starting to come out. Basically, the Me Too movement for restaurants. No, no, no. But so we see what he expects to be like, what? Like, no, he does shit. He'll chuck shit away. He'll yeah. go to the kitchen and fucking yell at the chef. Yeah. I'm sorry. What, yeah. what the fuck? Because he's yeah. James motherfucking Corden. Are you kidding me? You like, someone Keep is talking. too big for... Someone is fucking too big for their britches. Like, fuck yeah. you. Keep like, talking. what if I went into your way. show and did that shit? Because, you know, the scrambled eggs were whipped, not whatever. Whatever, fuck. Wow, GQ put up an article, the James Corden restaurant drama will never, ever die. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so restaurant it's like tiers. in GQ. So restaurateurs, you know, had the uh, shit. A blacklist. They Gordon. have a blacklist. Yeah. I mean, that one restaurant, eighty six, then, you know, like which restaurant is that one? No, because then because they are getting my customer right now. Because you know, like most restaurants, be like, well, fuck, the customer's always right, and he's a celebrity. But that one restaurant's like, nope, I got a limit. You crossed it. Fuck it. So for those who don't know, the restaurant in question is called Balthazar, which ah. is a uh, frame, uh, famous French brasserie known for its swanky re- uh, celebrity regulars, uh, Keith McNally, not Ian. Keith McNally is <laughs> is also one of Manhattan's most notable restaurants. If if Ian McNally owned a restaurant, oh, I would you love think that. he would give James Corden the time of day? No, nope. <laughs> immediate blacklist. No, he might just to see what drama. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, both of them have now uh, blacklisted Corden for his abusive behavior for staff, and he was yelling at staff. Abusive. Abusive. Yes. Yelling. Okay. The first incident had Corden demanding free drinks after he displayed a hair he says he found in his now-finished food. He finished it and then said, there's a hair in my food. In the second incident, Corden was enraged after his wife ordered an all-yolk egg omelette but found a little bit of egg white in it. When the dish was remade for her, it was served with home fries instead of a salad which further incensed Corden. As quickly as the drama began, it was seemingly snuffed out. Six hours later, McNally, ooh, McNally posted that Corn had apologized to him and said the ban was lifted. I strongly believe in second chances. But um, the other restaurant, Balthazar, has stood firm. And Corn even issued an apology to, to Balthazar. Half-heartedly. Half-heartedly. And basically said his standard, I did not yell at anyone. I did not scream. I did not shout. I was not abusive. And then put the blame on the restaurant. That he was served incorrect food. There was a misunderstanding. Pull the other one. Which other one? That's a phrase. Oh, okay, sorry. No, because there are so many of these coordinates. Oh, no, I don't now. mean literally pull I was the like, other one. Huh? I mean... But yeah, he's oh. he's famous now. And oh. there have been many Can waiters just... waiters and waitresses before this incident yeah. have, of course, taken a TikTok talking about it, but it was never, of course, it's TikTok. I don't think anybody took it seriously. So when Balthazar came out, that Suddenly, was like, everybody oh, was shit. like, shit, it's legit. Yeah. And there's a huge history. No, but uh, it's, just, it's just really sad when people let shit like this get to their heads. Yeah. Like, did he did he get citizenship? Like, fr- Craig and John? I don't think so. <laughs> because, the, because he's stuck in this limbo now. Sorry. The Americans don't want him. The <laughs> British don't want him. Do the Americans not want him? No. Because they also don't like him. And well, now this like restaurant Bieber thing. all over again. <laughs> but at least Bieber had sort of a still following. I don't know no, who but follows Canada Cordon. was like, no, you've Americanized him. We don't want him anymore. He's spitting on his fans. He no. touched the Stanley Cup. <sighs> you don't touch the Stanley Cup. But he's James Corden. 
He no, he's really? Justin Bieber. Justin oh, Bieber. Bieber. Oh, I thought Corden touched that. I would no, not be no, surprised. Bieber. No, I would not be surprised. Bieber's Corden. Canadian. He should have fucking known better. No, 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 no. And he's no, no, no. And also, he spit on his fans. Yeah. Oh no. He spit on his fans. Ah, oh, it's okay. Let's not. He's Canadian. No. No, 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 no. That's not right, eh? That's not right, eh? But he vomited on stage, so that that had its come up. No. No. I mean that he could have been ill. Ill. It's fine. But yeah, no one likes James Corden. So if he's on Doctor Who, no thanks. We don't wow. need you on Doctor Who. It's fine. I want Trevor Ooh. Noah on Doctor Who. Oh, Actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tre- yeah. Tre- Russell, get on it. You know what? what Trevor I- as a doctor. Ooh, red nose. At least, at least a red nose day. Do you think it will work? Trevor as the companion. You reckon? Trevor is more companiony. Really? And John Oliver as the doctor. Oh, for fuck's sake! Yes. yes! Come John, on, John. Come on. John you Oliver as the doctor to? and Trevor Noah as the as the companion. <laughs> I just imagine John Oliver running away from everything <laughs> and that's why Trevor's there With I can't solve it let's run yes and I mean he's had experience with running so it's running <laughs> right away from explosions yes but yeah I mean I don't know who no, knows no, no, who's no. gonna appear on Doctor Who at this point oh, it's no, John Oliver game. can't be the Doctor anymore you know why, why? He's, not he's American, American. yeah he's oh. not British anymore but he's still British in our hearts. He's American. He's still British. He's so British. You know who, which is funny. You know which uh, Hollywood star I recently discovered on a first season of Toast of London. Oh yeah, yeah, Karen Knightley. No, Daisy Ridley. Sorry, Daisy. Yeah, Ridley. Daisy Sorry. Ridley. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I got them mixed up. Yeah, Daisy Ridley is a fucking stagehand, possibly I was like, prop. I was like, is that? Is and oh, I feel oh. <laughs> if you look at the years, I'm like, what? I think she was auditioning for Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Probably. She's a Toast of London, <laughs> and she didn't pop in that. Huh? If you know that, she didn't really pop. Like she looked like an extra. Yeah, because she was probably just an extra. She was a stage. I know, with but two you lines. know, like how some actors, where you're like, you oh. see them as an extra, and you're like, who's that? Yeah. No, Daisy just looked like, and then suddenly in Star Wars, like, oh, ah, that's <laughs> why I had to do like almost four takes before I was like, that is Daisy. Yeah. Because I thought it's in the credits. Maybe she looks like Daisy. <laughs> it can't be. Oh shit! It is. <laughs> but yeah, I so I've been watching Toast of London again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you're right. It's off Netflix now. Yeah, you're right. Toast of uh, Hollywood no, just doesn't work. It doesn't have the same flavor. No, because they don't get their humor. No, like that's why even Adele, 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 when she was interviewed, I think by Graham, she's like, "What did you really miss about the UK?" Because she was stuck in America for a lockdown. Mm. She's like, "British humor, yeah. they just don't get it." Like they, they just, not they just don't understand. Like I say something and they just like they look at me like I'm like I'm offended, and someone was like, "No, no, it's just, you just don't understand." Like, I, don't I do not Americans... get the Adele accent, right? I'm so sorry. I don't think Americans oh, no, will the understand. Adele, the Adele accent is think of a machi at a pasa from Hackney. Yeah. Well, I, like, cause I, I, just, I always go back to that video that I think Charmaine posted. Like, There's a fucking fly on me. Oh yeah, yeah. What the fuck's it? Ah, it's on me fucking leg. <laughs> like, how does a voice like that create something so beautiful? Yes. <laughs> no, but like, let me just, just put this mic up in between my tits. <laughs> and like, oh my god, she's actually put the mic between her tits. Like, yeah, of course. I mean, where else would you put it? I mean, you know, it, it'll, oh my her tits god. will hold it in place. Yeah. How did it sound like going well, she's anywhere? so lovely, but you know, she's amazing. Like you, you know, know, you hear that voice, you expect her to come off stage like, and yes, I'll be performing no, no, no. next. She's, and blah blah. She, can I can I say chav? Can I say chav? She's pretty chavy. She's pretty yeah. chavy, but like in a good way. Like great. I mean, no, she's, she's a cockney. She's a cockney. Yeah. yeah look it, at her Instagram right? live. All you need to do is look at her Instagram live, and you know. Yeah, I don't know if people understand. Like, I don't know if the, Amer- the Americans really understand what she's saying. Yeah. Who's Peppa Pig? <laughs> I love her I mean love that woman she's amazing no but I was gonna say like I think the most direct joke that Toast of London has the reoccurring one that I doubt Americans will understand is of course Clem Fandango <laughs> like after a while they'll be like why is he so annoying what's the deal with this Clem Fandango no but that's, that's the thing just it. I don't. I don't care what country you're from though if you've done VO <laughs> you, you get the joke yeah. If you've <laughs> ever done VO, you've d- you get the joke. <laughs> like, of course, the first person I sent that clip to was fucking Gavin. All right, clip. And he's like, "Yep, I've seen it. Yeah, <laughs> it's both funny, but also brings back bad flashbacks. Trauma, <laughs> PTSD, <laughs> yes, man. Fandango, PTSD. I can hear you. <laughs> but another thing, if you don't mind me saying, I've watched, which I have to mention, is Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear is now in cinemas. In its full unre- uncut glory, apparently. It's insane. It's gory. It's violent. If you if you cannot take gore, then yeah, you, you shouldn't be watching Cocaine Bear. <laughs> but... But CGI gore. 
No? It's practical effects gore. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, okay. That when, makes me want to see it even more. When when the bear, of course, is destroying one of the humans, of course, that's CGI. Spoiler. But it's what comes after it that is... Oh, the visual effects team and the practical effects team did a fantastic job because some of those body parts, I'm like... Ooh, and it's you see the innards spewing out oh, close nice. up. And I I'm love like, it. Ah. I love it. And when you understand who produced this film, you're like, makes perfect sense. Who? So of course Elizabeth Banks directed it. Mm-hmm. Lord and Miller produced this film. Ah. Who? Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Don't know. Lego movie. Lego movie right. community. Oh. Uh, yeah. Wait, and people took this movie seriously? That yeah, you cannot take this movie seriously. Ha- Excuse me. Lego, it's about not- a bear that took a shitload of cocaine. What else do you expect? And people are now saying, oh, this is very loosely inspired by the true story. Yeah, because the yeah. true story was a short New York Times article in 1985 that just said a 79 kilo bear has cons- overdosed on cocaine that was spilled out by a drug smuggler mm. on an airplane. That's How it. much more can you go off that? So, of course, they had to create another it's story. Yeah. yeah. Where now this 200 kilogram bat bear has uh, eaten cocaine and is causing rampage in the forest. So, yes. does what I wanted, I mentioned in another episode, what I was hoping for the movie, does it happen? Does Unfortunately, he wear... Leo does not. Does no, 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 no. The Hawaiian shirt. <sighs> no. <laughs> There's no Hawaiian shirt in this one. Say hello to my little friend. No, he doesn't. Ah! He doesn't talk, unfortunately. But... He is fucking cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, can you imagine if he cute. talked and he sounded like Yogi Bear? That'd be awesome. Oh, can hey, he imagine, Yogi. Can you imagine if it sounded like Paddington? Oh, that's just weird. No, that's just wrong. <laughs> that is just wrong on so many levels. I'm sorry, ben I, Winshaw. I, I can't think no, no, of, no, no, no. Smokey Bear. I can't think of Paddington Ooh. Bear without thinking of how everyone photoshopped him like a horror movie. <laughs> just the creepy standing there in a corridor. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. But yeah, I mean... No, or Smokey Bear. Smokey Bear might work. No, Smokey... No, I want Smokey Bear to be the bear that comes in. All right, now. This kind of thing should not be done. And then Cocaine Bear just lives, rips the living shit out of it. Like, it's a lot of fun. Uh, don't expect a, a very deep story because that's not what you're there for. The performances... That's not what you're there yeah, for. Even the performances... Halfway through, I was like, these are the most one-dimensional characters I've seen. But then again, I'm like, I'm watching a film called Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Like O'Shea Jackson, Alden Ehrenreich, actually, I loved Alden in this. Sorry, you two talk first because uh-huh. these phone messages are distracting. Oh, go, go, go. Okay, go, go. okay, yeah, okay, yeah, go, okay. Go, okay, go. okay. Right, go ahead. Apply. Yeah, but hello. <laughs> Alden Ehrenreich, I feel, redeemed himself because he's, the entire film, he's a mess emotionally mm. because his girlfriend broke up with him. Mm. So it's this very vulnerable version that I have not seen before. Oh. I've, I've only seen him in solo, unfortunately. Right, I've right. not seen anything else, but this film, I love him in this. <laughs> I just want to give him this big hug. Um, O'Shea Jackson also mm-hmm. is this... O'Shea Jackson and Alden Ehrenreich are that comedy duo that yep. you love. That yep. no harsh black guy and the crippling anxiety white guy. And it works so well. Kerry Russell, surprisingly, did a fantastic job as a mother. I think she is the one character that is the strongest in the whole film. Mm. Like, she is a badass protecting mm-hmm. her two kids. Mm-hmm. But of course, the star of the show is that fucking cocaine bag. It's ridiculous. You need to watch this at least once. Um, I am hoping they will make that sequel called Cocaine Shark. About have you not heard this new story? No. So apparently there was a bunch of drugs that was found in the ocean. Yeah, because cocaine. that's where they keep them. And this there was a dead shark nearby. So we're like, Cocaine Shark. Oh god. <laughs> and Elizabeth Banks has come out to say, that does sound like an interesting story. Come on, Lord and Miller, Cocaine Shark, let's do this. But yes, it comes out in cinemas today. It's fully uncut and uncensored. In Malaysian cinemas. In Malaysian cinemas. There are a few censored curse words, but that's fine. But everything else is fully there. I highly recommend you go and see it because seeing this on the big screen is a lot of fun. Mm. Mm. But just don't take it seriously. Don't expect a good story. It's an A-list, B-grade film. I'll say that. Okay. Things like eight legged freaks yeah, or yeah. snakes on the plane. It, yeah, it follows yeah, that sort of. I mean, that's the thing. Well, yeah. Like plane. I don't yeah. get when people, see, like, the same shit happened to snakes on a plane. When whenever anyone asks, when I said like, oh, I just saw snakes on a plane, and they're like, what's it about? I'm like, Are you snakes fucking kidding me? It's on a plane. in the title. Like, no one wants to accept the title. <laughs> they're like, cocaine bear. What's it about? Uh, it's about well, a bear, bear who took cocaine, took cocaine by yeah. accident. Yeah. Like that's it, and goes, gets high on cocaine and fucks everyone up. Yeah. Like, and what are you expecting? It's like Jaws. What do you think Jaws is about? 
Sharks. Shark. Jaws. Jaws. No, no, no it's, it's about a guy that ate too much food and his jaw got too big. Yeah. It's about that guy from James Bond. Oh, I actually love that kind of food. Yeah, I love swimming. It That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we discover how he got his teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but I mean, the marketing team has really fucking made this obvious that this... But people still don't get it. Yeah. I mean, the poster itself has the bear in a fucking cloud of cocaine. I feel like for a lot of people... No, no, no. That's not a cloud. It's just a cloud. It's just, it's just aesthetic cloud there you go. I feel like for a lot of people When it's something like that When it's so on the nose It's so on the nose They refuse to believe it Yeah And I'm seeing articles of reviews From a certain local review uh, outlet And it's like You cannot take The second you take this seriously That's when it falls apart And not every film Needs, needs to be to, treated Like yes. an Oscar worthy film Yes I'm not going to say who But to compare it to The Revenant Honestly, Only because it's a bear. Really? Only because it's a bear, bro. Yeah, I'm like, come if on. If you're going to compare it to any bear, the Care Bears. Oh, I would love a horror version of the Care Bears. Oh, God. has You guys, uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm never ever going to watch it. But then there's the horror Winnie the Pooh, right? No, okay. Here's the, thing. <laughs> Here, here's the, the pitch. Space. Here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. The Care Bears go in the multiverse. Oh, fuck. <laughs> right? So they find their evil versions of themselves. I think they've done that before. Right? Okay. The hate bears or something. <laughs> you know, so they got shit like racism. <laughs> the, the swastika. You know, or like, it says me too with a cross on it. Like, they're just really, really bad people. <laughs> whenever, whenever they want to kill somebody, it's, Care Bear Stare, motherfucker! <laughs> I want to see this film. <laughs> it would be interesting. It would, and also... And then they have to team up to defeat Cocaine Bear! Fuck yes! Come on! What have I created? Oh, yes. I would love to see oh that film. God, and yes. it's not unlikely possibility because the same makers that made uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey have recently stated because of the influx of material from Disney that's going to be coming into public domain. They are creating a whole universe. The next one they're doing is Peter Pan. And their big goal, because Mickey is going into public domain this year. Mm-hmm. So now they are going... Disney's not going to let... They're not. They're going to renew that shit, man. They're, they're going to figure something out. put it in a trust fund. They'll figure something out. They're not going to give yeah. up on the fucking mouse. No. Also, Will actually, she? no. Are you sure Peter Pan? Because most of Peter Pan's rights goes to the great... Own, the, 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 the hospital. The hospital owns the rights for that. For Peter Pan. For J.M. Barry. I don't know, but they did say that that's going to be their next one. Because it also depends. Okay, so... <laughs> the other tricky thing is... It also depends on what country you're in. Hmm. You know what I mean? How public domain is defined and how many years always always depends on the country that it originates from, the country you're in, right? So, who knows? It, it, it has like, to be an American uh, company, right? Because, and, but that's the thing. It always depends on how you work around it. Like, there are a bunch of old blues songs that I thought, oh, this will be pl- public domain. But it's like, oh, there's a trust fund. Mm. Ah. There's a, not a trust fund, but like an estate, a trust. Mm. So, it's like, it's... It, the recording is public domain, but the song isn't. You know, shit like that. So you never know. You never know. Yeah, here we and go. Mickey Mouse would be very, very tricky. Mickey though. Mouse, no, they are, they they will figure. I, a way I out guarantee you, is. there is a building of lawyers trying to figure out how to keep the mouse in the house. <laughs> What what? Hold on. what? what? Oh what? My God. what? Okay. What? I'm what? gonna read this to you in its entirety because it's brilliant. Okay. So, in June 2002, Freight mm-hmm. Waterfield, um, the director, expressed interest in a sequel to Poo, Blood and Honey to ramp it. <laughs> Don't say Poo, Blood and Honey. We I? need the Poo, Blood and Honey. <laughs> it just sounds like a bad bowel movement. <laughs> we need the Poo, Blood and Honey. He has an interest in a sequel to, in his quote. Ramp it up even more and go even crazier and go even more extreme. That was in June 2022. In November, he announced that the sequel was in development with Frank Waterfield returning as director and writer on a budget five times larger than the previous installment. The production is anticipated to meet a February 2024 release. Alongside the announcement of a sequel, two other horror films were also announced. Bambi the Reckoning. (laughs) And Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Wait, it gets better. 
in February 2023, Freight Waterfield announced that the various projects uh, take place in the shared same continuity franchise, while Jagged Egg Productions oh. intends eventually to have crossovers featuring <laughs> the characters. Hold on, it gets better. Freight Waterfield also expressed interest in making films about Thor, the Norse of God of Thunder, as well as copyrighted franchises such as Teletubbies oh and God. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ha. The universe has I just begun. <laughs> Has anyone seen the movie? Not yet, because yeah. it's not on a digital yet. It just came out in cinema. Oh, it's it? not even on Shutter yet? Not yet. Oh. It has a IGN rating of 5 out of 10. Then oh my god, how much is it on Rotten Tomatoes? Film. I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes at all. Like, flat out. Okay, what? I think it's the most stupidest barometer for whether a movie does success or not. I mean, no, 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 but I mean... No, because you can easily game it. That's true. That's true. It is not impossible to game that shit. In fact, it's pretty fucking simple. They made this in less than $100,000. I mean, makes sense. Makes sense. I saw the trailer. <laughs> I mean, the most money they spent was on that costume. What's on that prosthetic? Yeah. But Wait. yeah, like... Nah, I, I don't trust Front Tomatoes. It was shot in Sussex. Because I also don't trust the public. No, no, no. Wait, is this a British... Because it was shot in the well, UK. Well, yeah, because any forest in America will not look like a forest in England. Ashdown Forest of East Sussex. It's not going to look the same. In 10 days. And it's pretty... It's, it's fun shooting in the forest in England. Really? Why? I mean, you get truffles. No, I mean... You get mushrooms. It's, you know, like... I had to play a, you know, like... Random medieval soldier number two or whatever the fuck in some fantasy movie that I don't know if it ever got released. <laughs> but yeah, I had to lie down in the ground. And you know, like, if you told me to do that in, like, Malaysia? Frim, I'd be like, fuck, fuck off. Shit, no. Then you were like, you know what? It's fine. It was like a picnic. I just lie down here dead. So it premiered in Mexico. Hey! hey! And then was originally set to be released for only a one-day event in the UK and the US. But then they managed to get... Uh... No, but they covered their costs in Mexico, didn't they? Because I remember reading about that. Like, they released it in Mexico... Actually covered their budget. Yeah, because now it will. Ha it got an expanded theatrical release time on the fifteenth of February in the states, and released in the United Kingdom on the tenth of March. It's a clever move. These guys are pretty clever. This might be the next Blumhouse. I want to not see as classy as Blumhouse. I, yeah, I yeah. was. I was. Gonna, I was like not as classy. Mm. No, like you know, you know, like for every for every Transformer, there's a Gobot. So. Holy shit, sorry. I just thought of an idea for that Bambi Reckoning film. What? Do you think Bambi the Reckoning is going to be a story of how Bambi found <laughs> her mother's killers and is now going his, on a rampage? Yeah. His mother's killers and now going on a rampage to kill. Yeah. yeah. Guaranteed. Duh. To me, even to me, like for me even, like that's the most obvious thing to do. I think they should do it differently. I think they should basically just take the script for the first Rambo, first blood. <laughs> And replace John Rambo with Bambi. <laughs> so Bambi comes back to the forest and he just, he just wants to live. You know, he's finally faced up to the fact, you know what, I can go home. I know my mom died here, but fuck it, I'm going to stay in this forest. But these hunters, man, <laughs> they just keep coming, you know, and ripping Bambi up families. Shit. So then like that, that general, that his, his general from his old days in Nam, yeah, yeah that's Thumper. She had Thumper like, come on, Bambi, you gotta come out. And then Bambi's like, that fucking speech Rambo gives at the end when no one can understand what the fuck he's saying. I was crying. Yeah. Yeah. So then you can have Bambi First Blood Part 2, where then you send Bambi to Vietnam. <laughs> To another, to a different forest. Yeah, a different forest. A different forest to fight a different. A to different save some deer. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be taken by hunters yeah. and then in in Bambi 3 Bambi fights the Taliban <laughs> no sorry 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 no remember Rambo 3 he works with the Taliban <laughs> copyright geeks in Malaysia yes <laughs> he goes and fights he fights the ivory poachers yes he if fights we, the oh, ivory poachers yes yes, yes. if we find come out come on man these are good ideas pay us pay us yeah but then they're gonna go but this is just Rambo, you said it. Yeah, like, literally. Like, you put a fucking red band on Bambi's head. Yeah, so I don't think we can copyright that story. You, no one's calling a Rambo. Him Rambo. <laughs> Bambo. 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 <laughs> Bambo, Bambi's cousin. More eventual cousin. <laughs> you know, even at one point, Thumper helps out, like the hunter's den. Thumper's like, bah, 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 just bashing the guy's head into the curb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my god, I would love to see that film and Stop that Kevin like, film. Bite the car, motherfucker! <laughs> like, whoa! Oh. But yes, we need the Pooh Blood and Honey should come out on digital soon, so we'll see that and have a, a nice review on it. Bambi History X. <laughs> Bambi becomes a racist. <laughs> and still played by Edward Norton. Edward Norton is Bambi. Edward Norton is the voice of Bambi. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, oh, my god. <laughs> no, but I think Bambi is Rambo. I think. Yeah, that's perfect that casting. Plot, that plot works great. What, what the fuck would be Peter Pan's nightmare? I don't. I, Hook. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't know. I do not want to extrapolate this. Because, I mean, already the crocodile hook, it's already sort of a nightmare situation. No. <laughs> no, 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 because, like, all these kids, but, you know, they're all stuck in the bodies of kids, but internally they've matured. So they're all on crack. <laughs> and their crack is like, you know, Tinkerbell or, makes the crack. It's mixed in with her fucking fairy dust. Or like the twist or like the twist of things adults would do to return to their childhood. Yep. Oh shit. You know, it, it gets dark. It's just a crack in. Yeah. The Native Americans have fought back. Oh fuck. Because if if you rewatch if you rewatch Peter Pan, this these people are like this, um, Why is the red man red? That mm-hmm. song is fucked up. <laughs> but you know, I'm, it's so fucked up. I'm very interested to see where this guy takes this Why entire the series. Red man I am, red. Oh God, Jesus Christ! But speaking of uh, directors who made some pretty shitty films, and I'm wondering where they are now. What the fuck happened to Uwe Ball? Oh, he's still making films. Is he? Yeah. Look him up. He's still making films. Mm-hmm. You can't stop him. Just you want to criticize him? Fine, but then you're gonna have to get in a ring with him and box. He can box. You never heard these stories? No. Oh, so there was shit. one. No, there was one film festival. It was famous. There was one film festival. Um, you know, and critics loved giving you bullshit. Mm. So yeah. it's like, okay, tell you what, you want to fight? And they set up a boxing ring. And I read one of the journalists. He wrote a whole article for acting in total film. And that's when ev- all these critics realized. Iwi Bull is a trained boxer. <laughs> <laughs> and he he pounded much ass that day. <laughs> Jesus. He fucked these critics up. And they were all kind of said the same thing. Like, you know what? His movie's still shit, but but I have respect for him. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to disrespect a guy who can beat you that up. Beat the shit out of you. Jesus Christ, you're right. He is still making He's what? still working. Okay, to be fair, his last Hollywood, f- well, last film was like in 2020, 2017, House of Evil. Yep. And then he was, okay, what is this, director or writer? He, producer. Yeah, then he went on to produce films, which is uh, House like, of Evil and The Decline. You can shit on an Uwe Boll film as much as you want, and I have. But at the end of the day, he covered his costs and got budget to make another one. I know, and I don't know how Hollywood kept giving him budget, especially for things like post Hollywood's not giving him budget. Who is? He's getting the money where he gets the money. Uwe Ball, if you have not watched any of Uwe Ball's films, Blood Rain, House of the Dead. House of the Dead, like, wow. It's the only movie I know where they do the Matrix effect on someone standing still. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker standing still. I have not watched like, oh. any of these movies. I oh, they're, they're. don't feel like I'm going to waste brain cells it's, on them. He did a Dungeons and Dragons. And the fucked up thing, like, Dungeons and Dragons, he's got Jeremy Irons in the motherfucker. Wait, he directed Wait. that one? The, the Jeremy Irons one? Yeah. yeah. Oh! What the fuck? Holy shit. Where did he get the budget for that? Exactly. He's got his ways. <laughs> shit. I did not it's know that one. It's his own studio. He's not getting it from like Touchstone or whatever. Because I know that Dungeons & Dragons film with Jeremy Irons because I wondered why the fuck Jeremy Irons was in this Dungeons & Dragons film. Ooh, speaking of which, where is the new one coming out? Because I want to watch oh, that one. Oh, uh, the one with should uh, be soon Chris Pine. Chris Pine, yeah. Yes. That looks like a lot of fun. Because uh, yeah, he's got a formula. It's pretty I simple. Mean, you I'm, buy I'm, a I'm, video game right for a cheap price. Yes. You get one ring. known actor. Yes. And Jeremy Irons. And then Shula, whatever. <laughs> okay. Because uh, he pre sells all his shit. So yeah, all yeah, these yeah. countries buy it before they've even seen it. Because they're like, oh, it's House of the Dead. How bad can it be? Some people are going to shoot zombies, right? Mm-hmm. Then people watch it like. Wow, you fucked up shooting zombies. Oh shit, I did not realize that Scream 6 is coming out before Dungeons & Dragons. So Scream 6 is coming out in Malaysia, 9th of March. Scream? Yes. You haven't seen the trailer for Scream 6? No. It's finally in the city. Yeah. So like, there's a, there's a, and yeah, the killer, the killer don't give a fuck anymore. Like, the trailer opens, they're in a bodega running away from the Scream guy. Yeah. And it's brightly lit for essence. Scream guy just pimps in. It's New York, so of course the bodega owners like, step the fuck back. Fucks him up, takes his gun. Scream guy's got a gun. 
<laughs> no, because there's no longer one ghost face. Apparently, this ghost face killer from the trailers, he idolizes the original ghost face yeah, and has yes. created a shrine out of it. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. I, mean, you got, that, I mean, you got a clan. Yeah. I mean that. I mean that. I mean that's what that's what a lot of that's what a lot of serial killer shows have been building to. And of course, it's in Halloween. Yeah. So of course, you have a scene <sighs> on the subway, and there's like twelve people in ghost face masks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, who's the killer? Yeah. But I am loving this aged ghost face mask. Oh yeah, no, the 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 they've uh, art directed it for the 21st century. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you look back at the first one, it's like you clearly Dude, bought this from the store. <laughs> they did. Yeah. They just picked it up. <laughs> I remember when that used to be on sale, and then it's after the screen strange. movies, it goes from like 10 ringgit to 50. Yeah. I wonder if the art director is like, why do we need to pay? Like, can you? Oh, fuck, fine. We'll make it more realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich, man. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, Matthew that's coming Lillard. out 9th of March. Dungeons and Dragons, Skeet 30th Ulrich, of March. That's right, that's his name. Skeet? Yeah. Yes, yes, I forgot his name the other day. Skeet Ulrich, Junkhead's dead. Of course I would remember all the, all, all the heartthrobs. And uh, Renfield is coming out 13th of April. Ah, uh, yes. With Super Mario's coming out uh, aptly on 420. 20th of April. You didn't like the animation of Super Mario? I thought it looked beautiful. I don't know. I mean, the whole, like, you know, Mario does not have an Italian accent thing. I'm like... No, okay, here's... Like, Super Mario looks brilliant. Like, it looks everything that I'm hoping for in a Mario film. Yeah. Fuck you, Chris Pratt! Okay. <laughs> See? See? Like, there's a... Okay, they've recently done a viral ad where the Super Mario's plumbing, plumbing company has an official website. They've done their ad for it, and you can call the number. I call that number. And then... <sighs> The voices of Mario and Luigi just—it sounds like an American trying to do an Italian accent. That's well, what it sounds like. Here's the thing. Like. Here's the thing, though, right? The Italian accent that the Super Mario Brothers had—it was the stupid fake accent. Yeah, but you see, that's the thing. So, what? You that's... want to sound like that? You want to sound like actual Italians? No, for me, I think the biggest gripe that I had is you have the voice of Mario. He's available. Why the fuck did you just not get him? Because it's also, if you think about it, a racist voice. But it's Mario. And also, they need a name to sell the movie. Mm. If you get the original Mario voice, you might not get the budget. But if It's you... all business, buddy. It's all business, buddy. But you can't get, like, you know, I, I would still accept John Leguizamo to come back. I would still accept that. It's they... all business, buddy. John Leguizamo, not, I mean, he's, he's not a big enough name. Not like Chris Pratt. And don't tell me we don't have Italian actors. Name one. <laughs> Go on, name one. There must be Italian. And don't say Roberto Benigni. <laughs> there must be a Italian actors in, in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, there are. I'm of asking you to name one. Yeah, I'm asking you to name one. Oh, my God. I feel so embarrassed right now. There must be name one. Name one. Because the only name that's stuck in my head right now is John Leguizamo. Name I'm trying to get him one. out of my head. John Leguizamo is not, not Italian. I know. I got a couple in the pocket, but go ahead. Name one. Name one. What the fuck? Yeah. Name one, an Italian American. You I really know, can't think of an Italian American. I know Monica Bellucci. You can't think of an Italian American. Wait, I know this is gonna kill me. I know this is gonna kill me. I know it's anybody in, in a Scorsese or Coppola movie. <laughs> For fuck's sake! I know it's gonna kill me. I know the name is in the back of my head, but I just can't bring it out. You can't think of a single Italian American actor. <laughs> I Al Pacino, only... Robert De Niro, Stanley Tucci. Fuck's sake! <laughs> I can only think of Leguizamo That's the only He's not no I, can... I know He's But not... my head is stuck With Leguizamo oh And I can't get it out <sighs> You heard Yeah you... but okay All three of those actors That you name You're right like, They wouldn't be able To do Mario Younger Italian American actors I'm I'm sure not... Carnival Is he an Italian American? Yes Ha! Bobby Carnival Is my Super Mario <laughs> I got one. Also, he's older, but his son, because his son's in the offer. Which one is his son? The the mob guy that uh, kind of has a thing for the secretary. Oh shit, that's his son. Uh. Yeah, that's a carnival. <laughs> oh shit, his son's pretty be, damn good. I really like him. Actually. His son is good. His son looks a bit more thuggish, actually. <laughs> no, because he was that one, the thug with the heart of gold. Yeah, the like, thug, he was a sweet guy. Yes. Oh, I, I didn't that's know that was son. his son. Yeah, because at first I was like, wait, and then I saw the credits, like, wait, is, he's a carnival. Oh. Is he a carnival? Is he the same carnival? Then I looked up like, oh shit! Oh. So yeah. Lou Ferrigno is Super Mario. 
Hey, I would buy that. He's <laughs> mute. <laughs> I, okay, I don't, I don't want to be offensive. I was going to do the voice. I'm like, no, 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 no. And also, <laughs> also, since we're talking about the offer, Giovanni Ribisi. But he's oh. too old. I thought of Ribisi. He's no. too old and Bobby Cannavale is young enough? What are you talking about? No, what but now that, you, about? now that you mentioned his son. Yeah, he's got a son. Yeah, the son might work, but yeah. Giovanni Anybody Ribisi. but Chris Pratt, la. Giovanni Ribisi. Anybody but Chris Pratt. Why don't you like Chris Pratt anymore? I've never quite liked Chris Pratt. You don't like Star Lord? I mean, you don't like Parks and Rec? To be fair, like, I've Maybe always... Maybe you liked him in Parks and Rec, but then after no. he lost the way, he didn't like <coughs> him anymore. I still feel like... Okay, maybe be the reason why I liked him in Parks and Rec is because I feel like he hadn't become Chris Pratt movie star. He, he's still very down-to-earth a little bit, but I feel after he Marvel... He down-to-earth. I don't know. I just feel now there's this air about him that I just... I don't know what it is yet. Maybe I'll find out in the future. finally got paid. I don't know. This is something about Chris Pratt. I can't put my finger on it yet, but I just don't. Oh, like I can him. put my finger on it. What? Jealousy. Jealousy. Yeah. Eddie. You want to be Chris Pratt? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. you do. You saw that shower scene in Gardens. Like, I want a body like that. If any. On top of me writhing. No. <laughs> If, if there's anybody in Guardians that you I would like... You wouldn't want to hear Chris Pratt on top of you. He no. was pretty cut now. No. Really? No. I don't like muscles. Oh, that's true. You don't like muscles. The only character I would like Drax. to be is Drax. Yeah, Drax. I fucking love Drax. But not not Star-Lord. Yeah. And then when I think about Jurassic how... World Dominion thing? <laughs> What's it called? I don't know what his name is. Jurassic, Jurassic The hand. Yeah. The hand. The hand. <laughs> the hand. <Yeah. laughs> mm. I like Jurassic World, but I was just like, okay, it's Chris Pratt, let's just go with I think it's right. just an acceptance of like... Dallas, Bryce Dallas Howard. Dallas Br- Bryce Dallas Howard, yeah. Bryce Dallas Howard, yeah. Which I was ashamed to find out was Ron Howard's daughter only a few years ago. You just found that out? A few years ago, pre-pandemic. I was like... The redhead didn't give it away? No. no but- didn't you watch Arrested Development season four? No, I only watched uh, one yeah, to Yeah, she's three. in. She, she, because Ron Howard is no longer just the voice. He's Ron Howard in the show. Yeah, 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 yeah I can imagine. So there's a point where they, where Michael goes to a barbecue at Ron Howard's house. Uh-huh. And I was like, and Bryce there's no there. way like, oh shit, they actually got, all, it's Ron Howard's family there. There's Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, speaking of Arrested Development, mm. <sighs> fucking Netflix. So Netflix has cut ties with Arrested Development and is pulling every single episode off its streaming service which leaves Arrested Development now without a streaming service so oh wait they don't oh because Netflix oh. bought everything and now they're like we don't want it anymore why because of scandals budget it's always the excuse of budget I mean end of the day that show had its time because mm. season 4 was season 4 is interesting if you're a writer hmm mm. And a hardcore fan, but it's interesting. It's not. Some episodes are funny. Most of it is like okay, this because it's very obviously like they very obviously couldn't get everyone. Yeah. Mm. Except for that one day that they shot everyone together, mm. you know, and it suffers for it. And then season five suffers from the scandal, mm. you know. So I haven't even see. I don't think I've seen season five. I don't know. I I agree what you said. It was of its time. Yeah. And it was revolutionary at its time. Because one, two, and three still hold up. Yeah. Mm. Oh, they still hold up. Uh, I never saw four and five, so I don't know. But I ended it with one, two, and three. And I still think it's a great series. Because four and five, there's a genius in the writing. Okay. Because because you don't have everyone. Like, every character has their own episode. Mm. And then in the last one, two episodes, they all are actually together. But the way it's done is quite interesting. So if you're watching like, um, what do you call it? Let's say, uh, what's the girl's name? The one that married to Tobias? Sophia. Uh, Sophia Vigar? No. No, no. No, that's uh, Modern Family. Uh, Oh, sorry. But yeah, the sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael's sister, right? Her story. Yeah. And then when you go to uh, (laughs) Tobias' story, it's actually the opposite angle. (laughs) And you can see the film crew shooting her story. Holy shit, okay. <laughs> right? Whilst his story's happening, you see the film crew go that way and he's going this way. You're like, oh shit. Oh, that is smart. So it's smart. Like, so certain episodes where like something happened in the background with the noise mm. that distracted a character. Then you see someone else's character's episode. They're the ones making the noise. Yeah. No idea that the other guy's in the other room. Yeah. So it's, it's like, style shit like that's pretty genius. Yeah. And 
it also predates Trump. Because if you watch it, fucking, uh, yeah, the dad comes up with an idea to build a wall yeah. in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. That's the premise of the show. And that I was pretty about Trump. that, yeah. So I was like, whoa, that's fucking weird. Maybe so, Trump yeah. was a big fan of the uh, rest of the film, but I wouldn't be surprised we got the idea from there. But mm. So there's some really interesting writing going on. It just, that's the thing, like, it's also overly ambitious mm. because it's not as funny as just watching the whole family together. Do you think they were trying to recapture what they had instead of just working forward? If, okay, because I was watching like a couple of like documentaries about what happened to the show and it does feel like, you know, it was that point of like, you have a lot going against you because you can't get all the cast, you can't get all this, da, da, da. Yeah. And you're going, oh, fuck it, I'm going to show you. I'm going to write my way out of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's trying to make the best out of that situation. Mm. And really thinking you can pull it off. And that's the thing, because it's like, it's hit or miss. Mm. Yeah. Because if you want to do something like that, it has to work on every episode. Yeah. You know? Because after a while, you're just like... You can tell, you can tell yeah. where the constraints were. It's when, when you, the family finally is all in one room. You're like, there's this sci- feeling of relief. Like, mm. finally! You're all there. And then like, it lasts for like 10 minutes and they all go off their separate ways and go like, ah, oh, uh, fuck, come on, man. Okay, okay, I get that now. Because you can see like, okay, you could get Michael, Sarah, and so-and-so together for yeah. this location, obviously for that day. Yeah. You know, so it's it's writing with a lot of constraints mm-hmm. and to, to which I respect it, you know, and there's some interesting shit then. If you're a writer, there's some interesting stuff to learn from. Mm. But does it work all the time? No. And of course, I mean, a majority of the cast have moved on yeah. to bigger and better things. So trying to get them, especially someone like Jason Bateman, yeah. mm. is going to be tricky. And it becomes tricky because by virtue of that, depending on how much time you have with each person, yeah. obviously some people get a better episode. Mm. Mm. So some guys' episodes are really funny, some are filler. you know. And then you notice like, oh, so-and-so got two episodes by themselves. Yeah. So you can tell as well, like, oh, so they could spread that story more, but that means they couldn't get other people. Mm. It's, it, you know what I mean? Like, like even Arnett was, what, he's busy as shit doing yeah. Batman, the Lego Because uh, when TV I saw series. the making of, I think they could only get the whole family together for like a day or two. So you have a day or two to fill in all those gaps yeah. in story, right? And then they're separated again. That's tough. Yeah, it is. You know, like, it was either that or postponed. And I guess they had to release at a certain point. Because postponed would have cost more money, right? It just didn't look like in the next few years there was a moment where they were all there. Mm. Well, and fucking, you got one guy doing Ozark, one guy Mm. doing, uh, what was that trans show? Transformation, transgression, trans something. Transcendent? The guy that got Me Too'd. He was playing a transgender person. Yes, Um, that was winning. Shameless? No. No. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. Transition, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You know? Michael Sarah's Michael Sarah. Where is Michael Sarah now? Playing poker. What? No, because he likes to play poker. So. Okay. I mean, Michael Sarah is. I was watching this thing, because, um, you know, I'm in my little blues phase. Uh, so it was a performance by ZZ Top um. on uh, Spike TV. <laughs> Back when Spike TV Fuck. was a thing. Yeah. A yeah. TV channel for men for bros. <laughs> Dave? Like, like Dave, yeah. Like Dave, but American. Cool. Yeah. So you can imagine it's a lot more toxic. So, oh, it is. So yeah. you have ZZ Top playing whilst Carmen Electra and the Pussycat Dolls dancers mm-hmm. are performing. Mm-hmm. Probably Michael Sarah pops So up. they're playing legs. Of course, you have like yeah. all these Mm-mm. girls in corsets doing legs. Mm-mm. And then on one of the tables with the dancers is Michael Sarah, dressed like his character in Superbad. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Just dancing trying to get the moves <laughs> just like and it's just like you know because it was back in standard dev so it's like a really bad quality mm. upload and you're just like wait is that <laughs> michael <laughs> sarah that's fucking michael sarah was there a reason for him to be there i mean they're promoting super bad but just him jonah wasn't there jonah was sat down <laughs> michael was on the <laughs> with the pussycat dolls just dancing <laughs> Okay, Michael. <laughs> but randomly, mm. speaking of corsets, ah, apparently, ah. like there was an article that I read. Some people are saying that like people like the BBC and Netflix wants to ban corsets as costumes. How are the BBC going to do their period dramas? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to 
ask people to do Bridgerton and stuff without corsets. I say it doesn't because, sound like it's because be because 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 corsets because corsets are are apparently torture devices. Yes, they are. No, they're and not. That was the time. No, they're not. It was they're not if they're of... built to not be a torture device, but. But people, but people nowadays wear them too. They buy them in sizes too small and yes. lace them up too tight so that they are uncomfortable when they. We cannot all be Dita Von Teese. No, and also you know, like every and you know, they're all trying to save money, so they're just buying off the rack instead of making yes. it to, according to your body size. Exactly. And then asking them to lace them too tight when they're not supposed to be laced too tight. They're actually there to support your body frame. But they also want to push the bosoms up to an unseemingly great height. No, because correct me if I'm wrong. Not so much torture, but in the sense of. Similar to the foot binding that Chinese did. Like, no. I thought the thinner the waist, the more beautiful you are. Back no. Then. Oh, then what was it for? It's it was to supposed build- to accentuate. No, it's that too. Okay, so the thing about it is that last time, like right now, the, the body silhouette that we are all aiming for is the natural body. Mm. Is basically what we are. This is actually the reasons why we don't have pockets. Women don't have pockets. Because then it fucks the booty up. Yes, it, because it would be led to believe that it fucks the booty up and it fucks the lines. It will like... No, what's, will, fuck, what's fucked up is y'all do have pockets, but they're made so small and so tight. Yeah. You can't put jack shit in them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, but so, but then last time there were like all these idealized shapes. Mm. Um, so it wasn't actually to make the waist, the waist isn't, you don't make the waist look smaller by tightening the corset. Because, that, that. because other than the corset, mm. you also have other things. Mm. Like, like you have duke. padding, you yeah. have like the mantuas on the side. So those things make it, are big to make your, your, to make your corset look small, your waist look small. Oh. So everything else is big to make your waist look small. Oh. It's not the corset's job to okay. pull you in. Ah. It's just there to support your body. Okay, that I didn't. But know, when you have yeah. the pin-up look, you're not. You don't have the gadunk. Yeah, weird mm-hmm. you don't butt have the gadunk. Mm-hmm. Then so then yeah, you like, will tight lace a you, bit more. Le- you lace it tighter so that your hips look more pronounced. Yeah. And then some people like to take it too far. Yes. Mm. And they're like, I would like to have my lower intestine up Pushed here. In. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But okay. you're not supposed to do that with corsets. That's why actually people not like... Not for like Bridgerton and shit. That's not the look. That's not the look. That's not the usage. Yeah, that's not the usage. And yeah, and if you just spend a little bit more budget to like make like the corsets in the proper size mm. and actually don't tight lace everybody. Tight lacing means you're like really tightening and really constricting. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be so tight to achieve that look. Okay. So mm. Yeah, because you have people who are working in places like Colonial Williamsburg. The most famous one is Abby Cox, mm-hmm. um, like she, a YouTuber, because she made a video that went that blew up when she's working at Colonial Williamsburg in America. And she was like, yeah, and the, the four years I spent wearing a corset. And she was like, it's absolutely comfortable. She would go about her day-to-day life. It be, and you, you listen if you listen to all the corset, all the, his, the clothes historian, the, all of them will be aghast when people go, why are, she's like, why are all these actresses saying that like giving the impression that corsets are torture devices when they're not. Mm. They're actually there to like protect you and like it's actually quite comfortable. Like some of them, um, Bernadette Banner wear, wears a medical corset because she's got sclerosis. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. You know, and she's like, yeah, like it's actually very supportive and it actually... It, it, if anything it actually helps the posture and shit yeah it helps the posture, you, right? and posture and she's like yeah it actually makes me even more lazy because then I don't have to hold myself up the corset will hold me up instead because mm. even when I had to wear a back brace the guy did say like don't wear it all the time because then your body just goes like I guess we don't need these muscles then yeah, yeah. it relies on that yeah. back brace yeah, yeah. okay now but I understand because yeah like some of the historians go like yeah it I can't imagine any of like these working women if they did not have the corset to support them and their back. I mean, because the thing is like, I, to me, correct me if I'm wrong, the problem is they're trying to make a period piece, but they're trying to, they are doing it with the mental image of the current figure. Yes. Of what they feel a figure now is supposed yes. to be hot as opposed to back then. And, and, and also... Um, like if you see any of the historic like the any of the historical YouTubers, if they start rating all the T V shows, they will like like we like right now everybody goes, Oh my god, it's so sexy to wear a corset as a lingerie. But like, you know, but just the corset. But all the historians will go, Oh, so dirty. <laughs> Because you're supposed to wear a chemise, one layer to yeah. protect yeah. you between the corset because you can't wash the corset all the time. Yeah. 
you know so mm. then it's like all these all these and it's also slightly more comfortable then you don't have this mm. bare like fabric against your skin yeah. a nice comfortable layer of cotton against your skin it's all these little things last time i was in melbourne when we were sending uh, my brother off to uni yeah somehow we stumbled upon a ren fair no uh a museum exhibition on the history of underwear oh, oh. yeah so you got to see like legit yeah uh, interesting whale bone corsets mm. and yeah. shit but yeah you could see that. all the chemise and all that and all the it was just like sh- looking at that pair I was like Jesus Christ there's a lot of shit under this dress yes like a lot of shit hey, but coming back to this whole Netflix decision to not use corsets I feel it's another Netflix and BBC and BBC it's another thing of oh quick decision somebody's complaining yes. about it we will yes. not use it anymore yes we will not dig into any research or try and yes. justify it but nope bam yeah, I mean, because it's so much more easier to just ban an item of clothing than to mm. do all the necessary actions to do something properly. Also, I feel you got to look into context. Like, okay, sure, if if you're filming a modern piece that doesn't require a corset and they ask you to wear a corset, sure, I get it. Yeah. But things like Bridgerton and whatnot, it's part of the costume. Yeah, I mean, so what are you going to do? Change the outfit? But actually, in Bridgerton, right, they actually don't use corsets slash quote unquote corsets they actually use stays because that period is post corset kind of it? it's a transition period between yeah. like corsets and like brassiers but do you think Netflix is going to explain that no because so, people are just be like that's corsets that's wrong that's no, like, yeah. read a fucking book you think our generation does yeah yeah so i mean like yeah i mean and it's fair because all these all of the actresses are complaining they cannot bruise them yeah of course because the corset is against your skin they don't put a chemise for you what to do and then they want they, they want you to um your breast like that so of course it's so too tight huh? i'm just imagining all these complaints yeah. by actresses and then professional ballet performers reading it going oh poor you yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> or, or, oh woe is you or, or again all the women who worked in, who work in all these establishments like, you ever like, seen like a ballet performer's feet Dude. god damn oh god damn yeah. yeah I'm like look if I was in one of these shows and they did not give me a proper corset I'd be like You'd bring you, your own, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 I'd be like, do, do, you, do you mind if I just go over to the corsetry place and just get my own? Like, I'll pay for it. It's fine. Also because it's tailored for you. You're yeah, more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a silhouette. I mean, yeah. you know, for, I mean, for a person like, I, I mean, I, I studied fashion for a while, so I would like to honor the silhouette. Mm-hmm. The whole point for me, the whole thing is just to honor the but silhouette. That's the thing, you know, like, okay, maybe not at Netflix, but at the BBC, they're going to be like, but we've got like 50 years of corsets, man. Yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah, I mean, can you imagine the Just, the, the costumers are like, what, uh, what, we, what, what about all the corsets that we've already made? What do we do like, with this now? No, I think also that's also the problem. Because they already have all, all, these old, corsets. all old corsets. So again, like, you know, like if a person, if, if a character has worn this corset yeah. for, all, for, like, for like three years because they were on a show that had corsets, and you can't give that corset to somebody else mm-hmm. yeah. because that corset has molded to this person's body whether or not you wear it the right way. Exactly. So obviously, it's going to be uncomfortable for the next person if you're reusing the same corset. Mm. So um, unfortunately, guys, you guys have to make corsets for new people all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah. So I guess it's cheaper for them to just not use corsets, period. And this has been your course of Corset 101 with the media chain. Yes. And we have 13 minutes of recording time left. Oh, nice. Because the, <laughs> the card, is it? The yeah. card. The okay. card is almost full. But yeah, okay. Maybe just to slowly close it up. Mm. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. What the fuck? I, I was going to... What are you going to do? I had something. I was like, oh, he's going to close it up. Okay, no. Let's oh, go. You go ahead. You go ahead. Because oh, I was just going to... Yeah. <laughs> Steam. silence. Uh, anyway. Yes. Awkward silences. But yes. So you're going to be all going off to Korea? Yeah. Um, you'll be in touch though, right? Yeah. Please do. What kind of scheduling would you have though? When would we be able to catch out you? Wait, what's the time difference? One hour. One hour. Okay. They're, uh, yeah, they're, an hour, they're only an hour ahead. That's, ahead. that's okay. okay. Yeah, that's, that's not fine. too bad. They're, they're, they're only an hour ahead. That's not too yeah. Ahead? Yeah. yeah. So if we're four, they're five, right? Or three. Huh? It's 4.30 now. Over there? Uh, yeah. So yeah. Now it's... Oh. 3.30 to 4.30. Yeah, 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 they're closer to New Zealand. On the line. Oh, really? Uh, oh. On the Y-axis, they're closer to New Zealand. Oh, yeah, girl. Yeah. I thought they were before. Oh, okay. UK, my geography, UK is that side, huh? so it's eight hour Yeah, my brain geography behind. is... Ah, they're before put us. Put them in the wrong spot. Yeah, they're before us. They're same at Tokyo. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Tokyo, I know. Yeah, yeah. 
my brain yeah, was looking same, at the map. Yeah, in the same, yeah, in the same column. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so just an hour. That's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I mean, like, I mean, get settled in first, do your thing, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. if it feels like you're up for a, you know, remote one. Yeah. Maybe we could do a remote one. It will be interesting because I, I have a roommate. Hey, First time hello. in my life, ah, uh, I'm staying in dorm with someone else. Uh. if anyone got advice, please give me, ah, uh. because I never stayed before. You know, people. It's very funny, oh. So yeah. Is it a? Are they bunks or separate beds? Separate beds. Okay, so Thank no God. one has to fight for the top. No one has to yeah. fight for the top. Okay. Huh. Hopefully, it's a. It's a. Yeah, someone you can get along with, la. Yeah, sure. settle in first, and we see how it is with the roommate. If it looks like okay, I can't record I, with I, this I, roommate I, around. Yeah, 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 fair yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we we'll see yeah. what it goes, and then if we can manage to pull off a remote one, at least that. But if not, we'll still be in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Please. I mean, what's the worst? Let's just go to the let's just go to the Malaysian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then like, hey, bro, it's your sister. Hey, it's your brother. But yes, yeah, just to irritate, we're not going anywhere. No, we're just no, 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 no. We're just taking yeah. a short, short, short break. Short, short, short break. I mean, we're not really break. I mean, we still have content. We still yeah. have content yeah. coming It's just, out. Uh, it'll be slightly different scheduling. Than yes. yes, yes. You know, and if you can drag like our, our Thai correspondent to come down at some point. And hey, if you're missing some content for some strange reason, you really want to listen to us, you've got 167 There's a episodes. Ton of episodes, guys. Yeah. All on all your audio platforms or on YouTube. There Just you go. go and find Just us. Go. We're always yeah. around. But we will miss you. Yes, we okay. will. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I miss you too. Mm. It's going to be quieter. Yeah. Mm. Different. Yeah. It's not okay. as much fun with just two guys. And because the, the energy is just... It's, it's not a sausage same. party? It's it is a sausage party. <laughs> oh, when we have the, the fucking matcha man in. Oh, it's, Jesus. It's a fucking kielbasa supreme. Yeah. When what? I was so what? What? <laughs> no, when, when I was listening back to that episode, it was the most sausage fest episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about fucking Oktoberfest Bratwurst Festival. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yes. It was... Yeah. And even when we had the interview with Yen yeah. and uh, Amanda... Yeah. It was It would have been nice to have another yeah. woman with us. But there was equal... No, no. It's... No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. It's still... Because then it's guys same. talking to girls. Yeah. Right, okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. There's a different dynamic. Yeah. So it's all a long way of saying that you will be missed. Yeah. And we are not yeah. the same without you. Yeah. Okay. I can't wait for you to come back. So everyone down online, show us some love as well. Yes. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emilia Chen. I'm Nick Dorian. And I'm Kyle Limba. Keep geeking out, yo. Brah! Isn't it funny how that sounds like better? <laughs> I, I did not think about it until Why you said it. Why